Hey camaradas, I'm here with my 2017 GLI and I'm about to change um, the, uh, the vibration pool uh, damper, uh, stock damper. I just bought a fluid damper and I'm going to show you the tools and hopefully uh, do a DIY that helps everybody. Uh, this, is, this is kind of a medium level uh, swap. So you need, you need special tools and you need to make sure uh, the, the you know that crank and the pistons are the first piston is a TDC and you got to make sure it doesn't move while you're changing the uh, the vibration damper so uh, I'm gonna walk you through I'm gonna show you the tools I'm gonna be using and hopefully this uh, it's gonna be uh, for good, good help for you guys so I'm going to be uh, getting into the uh, pulley area where the uh, turbo outlet pipe is I decided I, I want to go ahead and change the uh, stock one for this one. So this is the spool and uh, pipe set I got from USP Motorsport. Pretty cheap. I think they're decently made. Uh, good finish. So I'm gonna go ahead and swap these out too once I'm down there. So here I got the fluid damper. It's a uh, part number 551231. Uh, so that's good for a uh, Gen 3 TSI motor for my 2017 GLI. I bought the kit at USP uh, Motorsports and bought the kit that comes with the uh, crank pulley bolt. So it's a stretch bolt. So this is a this is a must replace for any time that you're gonna uh, remove the vibration damper. I went ahead and bought the Schwaben crankshaft pulley removal tool set. So let me. Uh, Got this from ECS Tuning. It's a very nice tool. Uh, I'm pretty stoked about it. It's a nice, you know, and dice finished. It's got some instructions, and it's got the uh, uh, the pin, the retaining pin. This is what's gonna go inside the crankshaft to uh, lock it in with the timing sprocket, and you know, got the other hardware in there as well. And I also got tool. So this is the uh, I don't know how you call this a spanner. No, this is not the spanner. So this is what you use to hold in uh, the uh, the vibration damper. And just to show you how big this is, this is as high uh, as the fender of the car. Um, so this is what you're gonna put in the pulley when you're torquing or to remove it or on undoing it to to remove it or install it so uh, so here's here goes nothing with a fender cover removed now I have good visibility and access to both the vibration damper and the throttle pipe, I mean that turbo outlet pipe, my bad. Still not 100% sure if I'm gonna be able to use the locking wrench, but let's see, I'm still hopeful. So the disconnection of the turbo outlet pipe, I think it was super easy. There's also another wire clip, clip. just the same thing, same mechanism here. Uh, where the turbo muffler is up there. So you just you kind of pull it and then unscrew these two bolts and then wiggle it. So you, you kind of wiggle it and pull it a little bit. Sorry, you gotta wiggle it and pull it and it, it'll, it should come off pretty easy. So now I have access to my crank pulley and the tensioner. So the tensioner have a little bit of wiggle there. Okay, see so if you can see guys here, that is the timing mark. And uh, I would have to, to align that to the timing case. Um, I think there is, oh, there it is. You see that arrow there? I have to align these two together in order to have a piston number one at top dead center. Okay, update. 
this tool is so freaking long, I had to do something kind of dumb here. Um, put a put a wooden block under the subframe. And this is already tearing down, but this is solid, so that's good. This is kind of spongy, so it won't damage the chassis there, the subframe. Um, I was able to put the jack over there under the pinch weld. I'm not too comfortable with it, but I'm not gonna be under the car for this. So the next steps is just, you know, removing this, um, getting the tool in, and then uh, locking the crank the crankshaft and uh, timing sprocket um, in place, and then install the new damper in place. So if you can see here, that's what it took for me to be able to get engagement of this tool and it's uh, almost touching the floor down there so yep okay so I just removed the belt and aligned the timing marks together see the little notch and the damper aligned with the arrow and the lower timing case and uh, to remove the belt I had to turn the uh, tensioner with a wrench clockwise. See, that gave me the wiggle room I needed to remove the belt. It's pretty easy. Now that I have the marks here, the next step is to remove this timing case bolt. Let's see if you have this one here and this one here. That'll allow me to put in the fixer. This guy here is gonna go around here. And I just noticed I need to have that um, tensioner out of the way, I think. I think, or maybe not, no. Oh, so, correction. I would need to remove this bolt up here and this bolt down here in order to align this tool whenever I get the stock damper out. Okay, so I managed to untie the crank the crankshaft bolt and I put in the uh, it's called the uh, fitment tool. You can see it. Right here, it's the support, not fitting in the support tool. Um, so you just screw in and height, hand tighten those two screws in place of these two guys here that I just took out. Um, so they're hand tight. And that's uh, in there to support the, the damper while you're getting out the, the, the bolt and then I'm gonna put the uh, locking pin in place and as you can see here still in top that center so it's time to remove this guy from here so, as you can see that you can see right through the engine case inside the crankshaft. It's awesome. Okay, so now the next step is to put this guy in there. And what this is, this basically does is once you insert it and you screw it into the crankshaft, then you tighten this little guy here. And what that will do is it'll raise these uh, keys if you will and what those keys are going to do they're going to um, lock in the crankshaft see as they as i tighten them they they raise a little bit and that's going to lock in the crankshaft with the timing sprocket so the idea here is to hand, hand tighten the pin and uh, once it's pretty tight, then you grab 
12 millimeter hand tighten it and not don't put a lot of force just until it stops then you're done next step is to raise the keys again to lock in see if I can get a better angle here to lock in the position of the crankshaft with the timing sprocket again this is only a, gonna be hand tight so that that should be done and now I can remove the support brace um, and remove the damper the damper is the uh, gets out um, just pull it no force needed and here is the timing sprocket and the timing chain you can see it right there inside there that's pretty neat and you do have to mind that arrow pointing down that's where the damper should you know right here should align Pretty cool. So when I go back to my fluid damper here, it's gonna have that same feature at your 12 o'clock. Once it's seated, timing mark should align with the um, arrow in the timing case as it does hey guys so that's it i got my fluid damper installed um found, found out that this tool or any other vw tool will not fit on the new damper this is way radius that this diameter here is way smaller than the stock one so i had to kind of uh, hold that in place firmly with my hand while i hand tightened this one and then I use, you know, the big, big ass wrench here to hold that in place. Then uh, torqued it to 110 foot pounds. That's equivalent to 150 Newton meters plus a 90 degree additional um, turn. So that's kind of a quarter turn after the 110 foot pounds. So I think it, it went pretty well. The damper is firmly in place it shouldn't swivel i mean it never swiveled and never moved while i was hand tightening and torquing it so i'll just do the uh reverse assembly uh of the throttle pipe and put the belt on and call it a day car for four days now after the fluid damper install and first thing I say is boy is, is the engine smoother I can really feel a smoothness that wasn't there before and I really enjoy that I'm happy about it just because of that I would recommend this install um, there's a refinement to the engine and if you're planning on you know keeping the car in the long haul like like I do and you're planning on doing some upgrades. Um, I, I have an RP, APR stage two and a downpipe, and I plan to keep on doing stuff here and there. Then it, you know, it's definitely something good to have in your in, in your motor. Um, I also did um, feel a little bit of a bump in power between the rev range, you know, the revolutions of uh, 4,000 RPM and 5,500 RPM. Um, it's not an apples to apples comparison before and after because I did also install the throttle pipe and turbo outlet pipe um, And you'll you know with those with the pipes in, you get uh, The engine spooling is faster. It's smoother. It's more the engine is more, more responsive throttles a little bit more responsive and you do get a little bit of improvement in the uh, turbo efficiency uh, but I think as an educated guess, uh, the bump in power I'm feeling at around 4,000 RPM, I think it's a, it's a damper. 
um, because when you go to the you know the S the U USP page uh, shows you a dyno that they did on a Mark Six GLI with you know APR stage two and downpipe, and you can see that bump in power at the same range between four and six thousand RPM. Um, but you know, bottom line is, if you uh, install the fluid damper, don't expect a huge gain in power, just a, a slight improvement in power. But uh, I think a, a very decent improvement in drivability and how the engine feels and all that. So uh, the other good news is that you don't—I don't think you need the, the vibration damper tool. I didn't use it to when I was installing and torquing the fluid damper. I did use it to remove the stock damper, uh, but you know. Again, yeah, if you find a way to fix and ma maintain that damper aligned to the mark, to the timing mark um, during installation and removal, I think you're gonna be fine. You do need the, the, the big long wrench uh, because you do need to keep that thing fixed when you're removing the stock one and torquing the new one, the new vibration damper, the fluid damper, or, or if you're doing a power pulley install or whatever. So bottom, bottom line is, I do recommend this uh, upgrade. It's not a, it's not too difficult, and you know the the long range for locking the vibration damper. It's like it's 70, 70 bucks, seventy something bucks, and online, so you don't have to spend a whole bunch of money in tooling. Um, so with that, I leave you to it. Uh, happy motoring, and stay tuned for my next DIY.